8 Ways to Improve the Growth of Your Acropora One quick disclaimer before I start, I'm staying away from the topic of feeding or nutrients because they are highly debatable topics and also because I dedicated a whole video to nutrients which I will link to in the description below. Let's get started. Number 1. Stability and Patience I know it's said all the time but this video would be incomplete if I didn't mention it. Ask any experienced Acropora keeper and they will verify that if you kept your parameters and lighting consistent and you stayed on top of maintenance, your growth and colors will improve. As long as things are within acceptable ranges, aquaculture corals will likely slowly adapt to their environment and will then eventually take off. As far as patience, just keep in mind that compared to soft corals and LPS, Acropora are slow growers. If you want to get an idea of what kind of growth I get, you can check out my Acropora growth video which I will link to in the description below. Number 2. Get yourself some metal halides. I know what you're thinking, but Abe, my electricity bill is going to be high and the heat. Look man, this is a video on how to get better Acropora growth, not how to save money on your electricity bill. No, but seriously, metal halides are boss at growing Acropora and you could ask any reefer who has tried them and they will verify. T5 and LED can definitely grow acros and obviously growth depends on a lot of factors. But what I'm saying is, all things being equal, metal halide are better overall at Acropora growth. And I know this from personal experience. There are many pieces from my Acropora growth video that just blew up after I stuck them under halides. And here's a more recent example. This piece did nothing but encrust for several months under the T5 LED hybrid over my 120. Since moving it to the Halide LED hybrid, within one month it started putting out new nubs. Number 3. Run your tank at a higher pH. It's pretty well accepted that coral calcification is linked to pH. There is no clear answer about what exact pH level is ideal, which is complicated by the fact that our tanks have a diurnal swing. But the closer that you get to 8.45 for the daytime high, and the higher you get for the overnight low, the more likely you're going to get better growth. For me, I'm happy if I can keep my pH above 8 for the overnight low. If I could do that, the daytime high usually hits close to 8.3 at the peak of photosynthesis. Number 4. Mount the coral sideways or diagonal. Now this is a bit of advice that you just don't hear too often. For whatever reason, in my tank, I would say that about 70-80% to 80 of the acros will grow faster if they are mounted sideways or diagonal hanging over the edge of a rock. Even if the frag is mounted straight up, a branch coming off the side will often grow faster than the original frag. I have a lot of corals that are technically not tabling corals, but they table outwards because I mounted them sideways. And they grow fast that way. From a lighting perspective, it makes perfect sense because it maximizes the amount of light hitting the coral. It may also have to do with flow, or maybe it's the best structure to facilitate the capture of food. But if I could, I would mount all my corals this way. In my opinion, the best aquascape is probably one made of thin branches, like Tonga Branch, because it allows you to mount most of your Acropora off an edge to give them a head start. Now obviously all species will not benefit from these techniques, like stags and tenuous don't seem to care. But on the other hand, they certainly won't mind. And like I said, about 3 out of 4 Acropora seem to prefer growing sideways in my tanks. So mount your corals diagonally or sideways on the edge of a rock, or don't give them a lot of room to encrust horizontally. Doing these things will likely facilitate their growth. Number 5. Change water. This is a debatable topic because you could find people who don't do water changes and do just fine. But in my experience, the more water changes that I do, the better growth in color I get. Whether the water change is replacing trace elements that I'm lacking, or it's lowering my nutrients, or the water changes are removing some unknown or immeasurable toxin in my system, who knows. But I strongly feel that my acros grow faster and they look healthier the more water changes that I do. If you're wondering, I do about 15% water changes every two weeks using Red Sea Coral Pro. Number 6. Frag or injure your corals. Cutting the tip off a branch can sometimes stimulate new growth in that area. The key word in that statement is sometimes. Because in my experience, this only works if another part of the coral is growing branches. If the whole thing is just encrusting or not doing anything at all, nipping the tip does nothing for me. It just heals over. 
This smelly hair didn't do anything for months and months except in crust. Finally, when it started sprouting these branches, I took the opportunity to nip the tips of the original frag to simulate growth. On this piece, all of the growth was here and I wanted the colony to look more even, so I nipped the tips off these two original nubs and you can see that it worked for one but not for the other. So it's something that you can try but I would only do it on a piece that has been in your tank for several months because simply you don't want to stress out a new frag. This last example also shows how injury can stimulate growth. When I gave my 140 a makeover, I cut this colony from the tile using my bandsaw. A month and a half later, you can see an explosion of growth where it was cut. Although the fact that it's now hanging over an edge is probably also a major contributing factor, which reinforces my previous point. Number 7. Give them more flow. As I mentioned in my flow video, a lot of colonies just seem to grow better or more dense on the side facing the pump. Not all Acropora like a ton of flow, but consider increasing the flow if your growth is slow. I'll link that video in the description below as well. Number 8. Move it. I know it's a pain to move corals, but moving things around really needs to be considered if the frag isn't doing anything for you. Like I said in my mounting video, about 50% of the time I have to move a frag to find its happy spot. So in a way, you should expect that a frag is probably not going to thrive in the first place that you put it, for whatever reason. I know that many of us just want to set it and forget it, partly because mounting corals underwater sucks. But it's important to keep in mind that moving and trimming corals, although not the most enjoyable task, it's essential for the long-term success and aesthetics of an aquarium anyway. Well that's going to do it for this one. Check the description below for quick links to the videos that I mentioned. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.